Employees at the Horn Point Lab know just how to trick oysters into thinking it's time to spawn. Oysters are placed in water that simulates summer temperatures, watched over, and then they are pulled from the water as soon as the sex of an oyster is determined. A male ejects sperm while a female puffs eggs. Oysters are separated by sex quickly because multiple sperm can penetrate an egg, creating a deformed new oyster. The eggs are checked under a microscope, then added to one of these large, freshly sanitized tanks, where they will be fed an algae mix for two weeks. At this stage, they're still larvae. The tanks are drained twice a week to make sure the larvae are growing properly. They're checked under a microscope and then thrown back in again. Just as a habit, as soon as we put larvae in the tank, we put the shell in, so that way you don't forget, it's just automatic. As soon as the oysters are ready to attach to a surface, they are officially spat, the name for a baby oyster. They will be placed in large bins full of cleaned oyster shells and eventually be dropped into the waters of the Chesapeake Bay. Now we go count them under the microscope. Students and employees here aren't just encouraging spawning. They're also researching what makes oysters more likely to spawn. The ones that do are recorded for size, with ongoing experiments into whether diet or water temperature all year round could affect the likelihood of spawning, since only some of these oysters out of the organization's brood stock spawn each year. In Cambridge, I'm Carrie Davis, Capital News Service.